Our world is at war. Only the old can remember a time without fear, without bloodshed. Defeat followed victory. Victory followed defeat. No one could gain the decisive advantage. Only now is there an end in sight. Who would ever have thought that it would fall to someone like me, an old archaeologist, to put an end to this madness? And I didn't find the key to ending the war on one of my expeditions. Not deep in some dark dungeon, nor on the peak of a fiery mountain. No, I found it in an old book. I only hope that luck has not abandoned us. What's happened to Beetle and the Archmage's men? Doesn't he know how... Then, you're MacGuffin, are you? Archaeologist, adventurer, and future trophy on my mother's living room wall. And you are Monkus, dastardly son of the Archwitch Mortroga. What do you want from me? I think you know that. Where is it? We know that your feeble-minded servant was on the way to that damned magical trickster Alistair. I won't tell you anything. Take him away. Mother has ways and means of squeezing what we need to know out of him. After all, what's likely to happen? Oh well. We're several days away from the wildlands. It's just as safe here as in the elf burrow. Oh, then? If it was left up to them, I'd just be spending the whole day... <gasps> side of the leg. Transport dragons can move great loads, like these barrels, wooden posts in this big crate. I don't think that this stuff will help me a whole lot. The little cage is fastened onto the dragon's harness. The old gremlin's in the cage. He hasn't noticed me yet. Hey, hello, you there? Who are you? My name is... Never mind, there's something you have to do for me. What are we talking about? It's not just for me, it's for the Alliance. I've no particular interest in the Alliance. I don't care. This has to do with everyone. Professor McGuffin's the name. I'm an archaeologist. I've discovered something. Something important. And they want it? Oh, yes. You've no idea how much they want it. what the shadows have planned. In the end, some knight in shining armor will come to our rescue. You may scoff, but they would have to skin me before I tell them what I know. Okay then, I'll release you and let you mortals carry on playing at war. No! We've got no time to lose. You! You must take this ring. Take it to the Archmage Alistair in the town of Seastone, on the coast. He will send someone to my house. The book that describes where it is hidden is there in my secret cellar. He must get it to safety. 
And what about you? I will win you as much time as I can. I can endure torture for hours, days if need be. The pain, the humiliation, the agony of body and soul. Perhaps I should just release you and we'll do without the pain and death bit. That would, of course, also be an option. Less dramatic, but if you insist, I can hardly stop you. How can I get you out of there? Good question. This cage is well built and the lock won't be easy to deal with. I could untie the cage and then it would smash when it hits the ground. Just like my old bones. But it's not a bad idea. On the way to Mortroga's fortress, we'll fly over the White Ridge Mountains. Everything's covered in snow there, and the dragon will fly low over the peaks. We could try it there. That was a joke. The chances of that working are about a million to one. I can't see any other way to escape. Fighting is not an option. <sighs> Let me see how the cage is fastened. You do that. I'll be... Uh, here, if you need me. No idea what's going on here. I should probably release the old gremlin before we get into enemy territory. We'll have to see how we go after that. This rope fastens the cage to the dragon. I have to undo it if I want to drop the cage onto the mountains. Oh, this is too tight. I won't be able to undo this just using my hands, but if I had a knife or a sword, I could perhaps cut the rope. Hey, MacGuffin. What is it? That kidnapper with his troll. Who is he? The sorcerer. He's called Monkus. He's the son of the Archwitch Mortroga. The Archwitch? How did she know that you'd made such an important discovery? Beetle, my servant. I sent him on a secret mission to the Archmage. I must have caught him. Isn't it a trifle improbable that a 50-meter-long dragon with a pathetically small wingspan could be physically capable of transporting such a substantial amount of gear? How should I know? I'm an archaeologist, not an aeronautical scientist. I don't concern myself with trivialities. I see it flying, so I believe it. I, however, find it illogical. Then it must be magic. Hmm? If something isn't logical in this world, then it's always down to magic. Very practical. Explain everything like that. Something's flying that can't fly? Magic! Can we talk through this plan again, just to be sure? You come up with a way to release the cage. As soon as we're flying close to the ground in the White Ridge Mountains, you let me and the cage drop, and then jump yourself. Do you think you'll survive the impact? I hope so. The dragon will have to fly close to the mountain peaks. There are lots of pine trees and snowdrifts there. And chasms, and canyons, and rocks? Yes, yes, I know. But I've got to get back to my cottage and get the book from my cellar. They mustn't get their hands on it. The cage has been secured with a thick rope. I can't release it using my bare hands. Then you'll have to cut through the rope. Splendid idea, but I don't have a knife. Then get your hands on one. Kidnappers up there are sure to be armed. I fear that could be true. Can we talk through this plan again, just to be sure? You come up with a way to release the cage. As soon as we're flying close to the ground in the White Ridge Mountains, you let me and the cage drop, and then jump yourself. Do you think you'll survive the impact? I hope so. The dragon will have to fly close to the mountain peaks. There are lots of pine trees and snowdrifts there. And chasms, and canyons, and rocks? Yes, yes, I know. I'll just carry on then. You wait here. That's the way up onto the dragon's back. I can't reach the support strut. What is it? 
If I'm going to steal a knife from the kidnappers, then I need to get onto the back of the dragon. There's a support strut there. If I could reach it, I'd be able to pull myself up. No problem. Here, take this. A whip? It's always served me well. You could use it as a rope. I'll just carry on then. You wait here. What? Yes, yes, I was evil and beastly. Yes, I'll bring him with me, Mother. Yes, yes, yes. I have to go. Why? I'm steering a dragon, remember? You know, I'm not being curt with you. I, I, yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll see you later. Love you too. Oh, by the gods, how I hate her! No, not much longer, Marcus, not much longer. Soon you will have it in your hands. And you have to be careful, Bunkus. Mother is mistrustful. She has her agents everywhere. And you are talking to yourself. Better shut up. There appears to be some truth in the Gremlin story. It's vital that I rescue him. If I remain right here on the outside, then they won't be able to spot me from the driver's cabin. I could really do with one of those swords, but I can't reach the stand without the sorcerer seeing me. A thin wooden stick with the flag of the Shadow Army. The stick's been tied loosely to the railing. <coughs> Got it, and the sorcerer hasn't noticed. An old cardboard box. It seems to be some kind of emergency kit if the dragon crash lands. There are a few moth-eaten blankets in the box, a bit of dried meat covered in white mould, and a blue and red potion, and... Hmm. A line with a fish hook. It looks quite serviceable. I'll take it with me. the line to the tip of the stick and hey presto, I've got a fishing rod. What is it? So what is this discovery of yours then? A great treasure? A weapon? I can't tell you. Too dangerous. And actually, well, I don't have it either. What do you mean? I found a clue in an old book as to where the artifact... where it is hidden. Artifact? It? This is getting more and more cliché. Cliché? The struggle of good against evil is never cliché. You mentioned your secret cellar. Is that where the book's hidden? Pretty risky. I've got a sword and can cut through the rope as soon as you're ready. Fine. I'm ready when you are. We're over the mountains. It's now or never. Are you really sure? I am. But... If I don't survive, or they catch me, then you'll have to fetch the book from my secret cellar and take it to the Archmage. You mean, if you die, the young, sexy elf will become the hero of this story rather than an old, dishevelled gremlin? How improbable. Don't talk! Just cut me free!
The right moment is close. There's the mountain. Good luck, MacGuffin. Wilbur, working hard at it, saving the world. I, I'm, I'm almost done, you. I could see. Beavering away, eh? <laughs> what were you this time? A knight riding high on his horse? Or one of those funny little mages again, eh? Hmm. <laughs> hey, hero. I've got a job for you. A quest. Send my new house robot off on a rat hunt. That rat's got an in for my precious hops, and if I don't plant them, we're going to be a wee bit scarce. I've never heard of a hero having to catch rats. You're not a hero yet, laddie. You're still my helper. And that being the case, you'd better get your act together. Then you can finish up here and go and have some more heroic daydreams. <laughs> I need to go and do a quality control check on barrels 2034 to 2038. I've got a feeling there might be something wrong with the 2030 batch. We'll see, we'll see. A thieving rat. Devious and dangerous. It always runs into its little hole when I get too close. Dwarfs are excellent stonemasons. That fireplace is proof. A large crate. It must have been delivered as I, um, I swept. That seems to be the rattle where the little beast plans its raids. The rat has chewed through the wood. There's some fur hanging from a splinter. Ooh, I'll take that. There is no way I'm sticking my hand into that hole as long as the rat's in there. The pipes run through the walls and floor. They are part of the central beer supply system, which runs through the whole bastion. A dwarf-sized crowbar. So it's pretty big.
That's the master brewer's favourite spot. He likes to relax there in the evenings. It's a map. It says the country's best pubs on it. It shows the area reaching from our beautiful White Ridge Mountains down to the sea, where the humans live on the coast. That is the Bastion's emblem. Actually, an entire battalion of dwarves is supposed to be stationed here. Each battalion consists of seven companies, which in turn consists of seven platoons. Each platoon consists of seven squads of seven dwarves. Dwarves have this thing for the number seven. The rubbish bin is almost overflowing. Presumably it's my job to empty it, but oh well. This pump can be used to pump water up from deep in the mountain. Although I wouldn't bet on it still working. I thought so. Broken. The dwarves have a lot of work ahead of them when they get back. If they come back. Dwarven fast food. But I'm not hungry. I oh, know. A very roughly knotted net with loose ends. Maybe it's used for fruit. Although I've never seen any fruit around here, the master brewer prefers heartier fare. I call it A History of Dwarven Cuisine The Last Three Weeks by Wilbur Weathervane. Ugh. The sun is pretty low. It'll be dark soon. A tin coffee pot. It hasn't been used in ages. And guaranteed not for coffee. The master brewer doesn't trust non-alcoholic drinks. Hmm, the coals in the oven have kept the stove warm. The stove isn't used much. Though this morning the master brewer heated up a few beer sausages on it. The stove, is still a little... the stove is still a little warm. You couldn't cook anything on it, but you could eat something up. A pile of dirty dishes. The longer the other dwarves are away, the less attention the master brewer pays to things like this. An old, rather dirty cooking pot. Mutant slime. Maybe I should have thrown out the rest of that chocolate pudding. I'd point it out to the master brewer, but then I'd be the one who ends up washing it all up. There is no way I'm taking that pot with the evil slime in it. Slime can be really evil. Bad slime. The master brewer says these kettles are used to make beer. This is his private setup, and the proper ones are in the cellar. Hello, Master Brewer, sir. Hey, I will burn. Did you know there's an evil slime living in a pot in the kitchen? Oh, yes, it nicked a sausage off me this morning. But doesn't that bother you? Well, yes. Live and let live, I say. As long as it doesn't develop a taste for beer. <laughs> Is everything okay with the beer? That's not so easy to say. It's complicated with beer. You initially think, hmm, that tastes good, but then, BAM! The finish is all off, earthy and musty, and there's nothing you can do. But of course, you can't really tell from just one pint. <laughs> so I'm supposed to uncreate the robot and send it after the rat. 
definitely. Shouldn't be too difficult for you, being a gnome and all. You've got the right kind of hands for all that technical stuff. I'm not really all that into technology. I'm more interested in the mysterious powers of magic. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm sure there's some instructions in the crate. Shouldn't be that difficult for Mr. Mage. <laughs> So I can call it a day once the robot has caught the rat? Aye, you can go back home and get some sleep. Where are the other dwarves anyway? All the way fighting, you know that. There's been nobody here except me for years. I'm keeping the whole place ticking over. If you weren't here, lad, I'd probably have pegged it from loneliness long ago. <laughs> What's the news from the front? The Alliance is winning, isn't it? It's a proper mess. They just swing back and forth. It's been like that for years. Neither side has the advantage. Today, we take Finsterberg, and tomorrow the Shadow Army plunders Auenheim. Today, we take care of Garrick the Throat Slitter, and tomorrow, they nobble Bella Sunnythor. At the moment, we've got Mortroga's Fortress under siege, the old Arch Witch. Not getting anywhere fast, though. It could still be years before either side gets the upper hand. Hopefully we do. Aye, let's hope so. <laughs> I'll take care of the robot, then. And the rat. Aye, go on, then. That's the exit, but I can't call it a day yet. First, I have to teach the house robot to catch rats. Let's see. Not a chance. I'll never get this crate open with my bare hands. Let's see. What's that? Ah, the user manual. Wood Elvish, Succubushish, here we are, Dwarven. Thank you for purchasing an X100 house robot, the latest in house robot technology. Feed the X100 the stinking remains of your disgusting existence, but absolutely no broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Hmm. Rats, there. Rat care, rats breeding, ah, rat hunted, rat hunted. In order to hunt rats or vermin of any kind, you must first feed the X100 with DNA from your target. DNA carriers include hair, blood, sweat, snot, and uh, other things. Okay, so first I have to give the robot a little garbage appetizer to start it up before I feed it the main course. Rat DNA. Finally, a simple rat trap. Let's see how it likes this. Aha! It works. Ugh! It looks like the X100 really liked that rubbish. At least it's purring like a cat. Now I just have to get it to hunt like one. And now the fur, a source of rat DNA. And it's gone. It won't be back anytime soon either. Problem solved. The X100 makes a pretty good rat hunter. I just hope it never mistakes me for a rat. To be honest, I'm not going to put my hand in there without a very good reason. Who knows what the rat has hidden there? Maybe rotten food, or already digested food, or even more rats. 
Hello, Master Brewer, sir. Hey, I will burn. The rat's gone. I saw. It's amazing what you little gnomes can puzzle out, eh? <laughs> the rat's lost his appetite for my hops at any rate. He won't be coming back for a while. <laughs> can I call it a day now? Of course you can. Safe home, my lad. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you later, lad. And another day ends. And, as usual, I didn't save any princesses, or fight any dragons, or hunt any orcs. I chased a rat off, and I didn't even do it myself. I used a fully automated robot instead. It's going to take more than that before my statue stands next to Knight Tilo in the Hall of Heroes, but I'm going to make it one day. Hey, you! Boy! You've got to get me out of here! Quickly, please! I was abducted. An elf freed me. They want... You've got to believe me. I have the key to something that could determine the fate of the war. Listen, boy. It's too late! You see this ring? It's the key! Take it to the human archmage in the town of Seastone. You understand? But all of our fates depend on it. Oh, dear, dear, nobody's going to believe this. There's no way I'll make it down to the human town by the sea on my own. I need help. I should ask the Master Brewer for help. Or Grandad. He fought for the Alliance. The Bastion looks so impressive. However, many of the halls and corridors were never completed. The tarps are supposed to offer the Stonemasons a little protection. They have to be pretty tough if they're out there in all kinds of weather. I'm not climbing up there. It's all iced up. I'd probably end up breaking my neck. Of course, it's pretty cold all year round up here in the mountains, but this year winter came particularly early. A rolled up tarpaulin, probably just like the ones hanging all over the place. It worked. I got one. Probably the statue of some famous dwarven leader. I don't know much about their history. That's the entrance to my family's gnome hall. We've been living here for generations. Master Brewer, sir. Hello, Master Brewer. Master Brewer, sir. Master Brewer. Mm, what? What? We have to tell the other dwarves. There was this gremlin in a cage, and he gave me this ring, and... What kind of ring, then? This, this ring. It's a very important ring. The gremlin said all our fates... Uh, Wilbur, I really don't have time for this kid stuff. I've got more important things to do. But the ring has to be delivered to the Archmage down in the human town. The Gremlin said it could end the war. Listen, laddie, that's a ring. 
What's it supposed to be able to do? It's... I have to. The, the Kremlin wasn't lying. Just think about it. When has anybody ever given an important ring to a little being like a gnome? That sort of thing just doesn't happen. But... Uh... That's enough. Now, go home. It's getting late. <sighs> I guess I can't expect any help from the Master Brewer. Originally, hundreds of dwarves were supposed to live here to defend the Mountain Kingdom's northern front. Now the Master Brewer and my family are the only ones left. A chair. This chair is completely uninteresting. Like I said, a chair to sit on. It's still a chair. One of my dad's inventions. He calls it a time measurometer. It spits the day into two periods of 12 hours each and shows which hour we are currently in. Sometimes I think that thing uses time up instead of just showing it. That door is part of Dad's living space optimization unit. Behind it is sort of a car park for rooms. Those are the controls for our living space optimization unit. My father invented them. That's the lever for my little sister's bedroom. I'm not touching that. She builds combat robots, and she kind of hinted that she knows how to protect her privacy. That's the lever for my parents' bedroom. I can't use it until they get back. Our kitchen. Our flour mill. Mother makes sure we eat a healthy diet. One day we'll all be big and strong, comparatively. Hmm, there's still some grain in the funnel. Barley, I think. Master Merlin's antibacterial kitchen cleaner. The dirt disappears like magic. If only I could cast spells like Merlin, or any other household cleaner for that matter. Mum hid the knives as a precaution after Grandad's knife throwing training classes last year. She doesn't trust us anymore. Hmm, a pale blue glowing liquid. Something tells me it's probably not good for you. My mum wrote super fertilizer on it, probably one of her genetic experiments. A totally uninteresting chair, which is absolutely no help to me. Not now, not ever. Hey, my mechanical flying fish Nemo. How did you get there? One of the few technical devices I ever built. Well, to be honest, actually my father and my sister, really, but uh, I did watch. It still works. A solid example of norm technology, if I do say so myself. My mother is a real whole wife. She spends her time on chemistry, biology, genetics and that kind of stuff. I think I'll just leave that alone. We norms have a golden rule, hands off another norm's experiments. Those are my mum's plants. She grows a lot of that green stuff. She keeps trying to genetically change the plants so they can grow up here amidst the icy mountains. The plants have grown. 
I could have sworn they weren't here yesterday. Mum probably uses a really good fertiliser. A flower pot full of potting soil. Hmm, doesn't look like Mother planted anything in there. Hmm, doesn't look like Mother planted anything in there. Those cogs belong to Dad's living space optimization unit. The machine takes up a total of three rooms in our hall. That's my family. Right now, just Grandad and I are holding down the fort. The others are all at a technology trade show down south. My dad is a mechanic and a physicist. He primarily works on, uh, things. Mother is just a whole wife and geneticist. The baby is my little sister, Sydney. I think she'll be a researcher too. She once doubled her baby phone's data transfer rate using nothing but a rattle and a rubber ball. My other little sister is Maggie, my parents' pride and joy. She mainly concentrates on robotics, combat robots to be exact. Grandad is a war veteran and conducts secret military research, whenever Dad lets him in the workshop, that is. Looks like I'm the proverbial exception to the rule. I'd rather go out into the world and become a mage, a hero like Knight Tilo. But someone has to look after Grandad and the master brewer. I'm more of a local, unsung hero. That's my family. Right now, just Grandad and I are. My dad is a mechanic and if mother is just, she wants my other little Grandad is a, looks like I'm, I'd rather. my very cool room. My old gnome scout rucksack. Pretty tough that, but somehow I always had the feeling it could have been a little larger. I wonder if putting small bags and pouches in it would increase the rucksack's capacity. My old tennis racket, although I was never very good. The cat cut is missing. What did I use that for? I'll just knot the loose ends around the frame. Done. Wouldn't want to play tennis with it, but it does make a fine scoop net. It'll take a long time for the icicle to melt. After all, the pot isn't all that warm. I should speed up the melting process. And down we go. Hold! Who's there? Hi, Grandad. It's me. I doubt it. What's the password? Password? I don't know anything about a password. Bad answer. Prepare to die, scoundrel! It's important, Grandad. So is the password. We are at war, damn it! War suffereth no carelessness. So? The password! Was it Fluffy Bunny? You wish? Die, maggot! It's important, Grandad. So is the password. We are at war, damn it. War suffereth no carelessness. So, the password. Nuclear first strike, sir. Hmm, correct. What do you want? A gremlin gave me this ring. He said it's very important. He said the ring has to be delivered to the Archmage as quickly as possible. A ring? Have you checked it for contamination? Con... Con... Um... What? For curses, hexes, poison! I, uh... What am I talking about? Of course you have. No one would accept a ring from a gremlin and not check it for curses. Dangerous little blight as those gremlins. You shouldn't feed them after midnight, you know. 
the, uh, the, the gremlin said this ring could decide the course of the entire war. Decide the course of the war? That would be... Where is this gremlin? He's been kidnapped. He barely had time to give me this ring. It should be taken to the Archmage as quickly as possible. The Archmage? Hmm, yes, yes. He'd know what to do. This is what we've been waiting for. This is what we've trained for. Uh... This is the hour in which a stout youngster becomes an adult. The hour of glory. The hour of fame. Hour, hour. But, but what do you mean stout? Does everyone know what they have to do? No. Right, men. Let it be so. Grandad? Call me Colonel. Just what exactly are we to do now, Colonel Grandad? We just discussed that. You get the equipment, I'll sort out the means of transport. Equipment for what? For what? For your journey to the town of the humans, of course. You need to pay more attention, my boy. I'm supposed to... I, I thought someone else... Who? I very much doubt you'll find anyone else here who's prepared to look death in the eye. This is your chance to be a tragic hero, my boy. A painful loss for the Alliance. Don't you want to be a hero? Sure, I I'd like to do something exciting, but I'm not sure I'm ready to try being a... Uh... Try? There is no try, only do. This is your chance. You'll be a hero, and I'll show everyone that this old gnome is still good for something. So, here's the plan. You get yourself some good gear, I'll sort out the means of transport. All right. I can have a look around, but no promises. About my equipment. Yes? Have you got everything? I don't know. What exactly should I take? Let me think. You need a helmet. You can fight without legs, but you can't fight without a head. Without legs? And you need a map of the area. Reconnaissance is everything. We are living in the information age. So I need a map and a helmet. Got it. And then, of course, you need a parachute. Better to be safe than sorry. Um, just why I mean a parachute? Just a precaution. Uh... This ring, do you really think it could end the war? I don't know if there's anything that can end this war. The gremlin said it would change all our fates. Maybe it's a powerful magic ring. We are simply soldiers, my boy. We fight when we are told to. Don't worry yourself about anything else. Sounds sensible. Do you know the Archmage? Have you ever met him? I've never met him. After all, he's a great leader and I'm just a simple, highly decorated gnome colonel. But I've heard lots about him. He's a powerful mage, of course. He's an advisor to the king. And he's our most powerful alchemist and chief of the secret service. He lives in a tower down by the sea in Seastone. Of course, being the important man he is, he's always away on business. I hope he's there. I always wanted to meet a real mage. If he's not there, you'll have to wait for him or go and look for him. You must only give the ring to the Archmage in person, you hear me? No one else. Give me your word of honour. If the ring really is important, then it shouldn't be our fault if it lands in the wrong hands. Okay, okay. I swear I'll give it to the Archmage personally. Um... I'm supposed to travel to a human town in your machine, right? Absolutely. It's the quickest way. And the safest? Absolutely. It's the quickest way. Well, we can't expect any help from the Master Brewer. He doesn't believe the ring is important. I didn't expect much more from that cowardly drunkard. Grandad, he's my boss. 
Some boss sits in his fortress drinking beer from dawn till dusk while his comrades are fighting on the front line. I think he misses them. Well, perhaps. But one thing's for sure. We are on our own, soldier. I'll go look for the rest of my gear. You do that. I've got enough to do here. But remember, never look a Medusa in the eye. And never look at anyone on the underground. Right. Grandad has this thing about secrecy. I think he's afraid of Shadow Army spies or something. Something my granddad is working on. No idea what it is. And I, I like my granddad, but his inventions are usually pretty dangerous. A huge machine, I mean, even for granddad. He's really taking advantage of mum and dad being away. Dad's vice brings back a lot of memories. Painful, mostly. Dad's vice brings back a lot of memories. Painful. A thin, silvery, elven rope. It's very light and almost unbreakable. That's Dad's spare toolbox. Well, he took his... Let's see. What are we here? Wrench, pliers, auger grease, a minotaur foot, a curse meter. I'll just take the entire box. Ah, an old extension arm. Very handy if you're too small to reach an object. Kind of a widespread problem amongst us gnomes. Parts of some machine or something. If it's useless, it's Dad's. If it's broken, it's Grandad's. And if it's dangerous, it's from my sister Maggie. That's one of Grandad's great inventions. A ship which travels underwater. It can already sink. The locker won't open. It was badly damaged two years ago in the devastating spring cleaning explosion. Those are jelly glowfish lamps. As long as you feed them every couple of weeks, they're good for years of light. They used to hang all over the hall. Now these two are all we have left. Dad's vice brings back a lot of money. It is a chair. Honest. The map shows the area between here and the human town of Seastone. It's worth a try. Yikes! Mm. What's happening? Oh, nothing much. I just scared off a pixie. What, here? At this time of year? The beasties are getting more and more cheeky. Phew. That was close. I can't get to the map as long as he's sleeping there. I'll have to distract him somehow. That won't work. How am I supposed to attach the tarpaulin to the backpack? That won't work. How am I supposed to attach the tarpaulin to the backpack? That won't work. 
How am I supposed to attach the tarpaulin to the backpack? That won't work. Let's see. I pulled the rope through the eyes on the rucksack. Yes, that works. I'll thread the rope through the eyes around the edge of the tarpaulin. Done. There we go. A parachute. At least I know what the parachute's for. The map and the helmet make a little more sense. Beards are important to dwarves. The longer the beard, the more respect the dwarf gets. And the beard ornaments tell you a lot about their owner. The master brewer, for example, is a second degree keg roller. He was born the ninth of 12 children and he's got a weak spot for beer. He's a bachelor, but isn't one for walks in the morning dew. And he was... No, I can't. I... Well, maybe I can. I'm going to burn in hell for this, guaranteed. The robot gets its energy from rubbish. That's got the power supply sorted out then. I wonder if that would work. At least it would distract the master brewer a bit. <laughs> ah! Hello? Stop! That wasn't supposed to happen. I have a feeling that wasn't such a brilliant idea. Oh, I like the master brewer. What amazing! The eternal struggle of dwarf against machine! And I won! <laughs> uh, are you okay? Of course! And why not? You think a stupid tin bucket's going to beat a proper dwarf? No chance! Ugh, that was good. Something's happening at last. Cause for celebration. I think we should drink to that. I think he's drunk with victory, so he shouldn't see anything. I have it. The map of the area. So that's two of the three pieces of gear already. Now for the most important thing of all, the helmet. The pot could make a perfect helmet, but how do I get rid of that slime? Slime can be really evil. Bad slime. I can't get close enough. It'll snap at me and slime me. A perfect fit. Now we can make long-reaching attacks on bacteria. Now I'm going to do something I should have done a long time ago. It's too bad that slime had to be so evil. Now that's a helmet fit for a hero. It only stinks a little bit. And that's the last of my gear. I must get back to Grandad, fast. It shouldn't take long to melt the icicle, the stove is still warm. The icicle is gone. All that's left is crystal clear water.
The master brewer says it's very easy to brew beer. Still, he did go to school for you. Hello, Master Brewer, sir. Hey, I will burn. When the robot started in on you, I never thought you'd beat it. <laughs> it was an epic scrap, lad, an epic scrap. Dwarf against machine, nature against technology, mind over matter. Mind? How did you destroy it? I hit him as hard as I could with heavy objects until sparks started leaping out of him. Oh, a shrew tactic. Too right, but he did land a couple on me. Look what he did to my beard. Oh, uh, yes. I was so tanked up with ale and adrenaline I didn't even notice. I talked to my granddad. He thinks the ring is important too. He wants to help me get to the human town. Yeah? Well, of course he wants to do that. Listen to me, laddie. Nothing against your grandpa. But don't you think he's uh, a few gills short of a pint? My granddad is a great soldier and inventor. Uh, of course he is. Of course he is. But uh, how should I put it? He's maybe had one crash landing too many. His flying machines were mostly a bit, uh, temperamental. And let's face it, he wasn't actually the greatest of pilots. Honestly, son, if your grandpa reckons there's something in that story, then for me, that's just one more reason to keep out of it. Grandad and I will show everyone. I have to go. Enjoy the celebration. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't reach that. Gotcha. Okay, whatever, it's a horse. And down we go. Um, excuse me, Colonel Grandad? Report back. I have the pot. Um, um, helmet. Excellent soldier. The helmet will protect you from physical attacks. You can even sit on it and use it as a saucepan. Ooh, how practical. Let me see your helmet. It's not all that great, I know, but... What? It's a good helmet. And it's going to protect a good soldier. That is, of course, as long as the enemy doesn't attack with dragons. Or has wizards in its ranks. Or magical swords. And doesn't go for your head. Maybe I should look for some armor with magic. Poppycock! That helmet will do. I got a map. Excellent! My commanding officer always said good maps are half the battle. Of course, you won't be needing it if everything goes well. If what goes well? But if not, it's always good to have a map with you, what? I have a parachute. Fantastic! Parachutes are hard to come by and are difficult to make yourself. 
After all, you'd only want to entrust your life in a quality product, not something makeshift you've patched together yourself. Trust my life? But, of course, I, I mean, I mean, of course not. So, that's the last of my gear. Excellent. We could get going if only my damn machine would work. But you can't find a thing in this house.